Okay, here's an example. There's a light bulb manufacturing company, and this company guarantees that the mean life of a certain type of light bulb that they sell is at least 750 hours. So they're going to claim that on the average you should be able to get 750 hours of use out of this type of light bulb. So somebody maybe didn't believe them. So they went and took a random sample of 36 of these light bulbs and they tested them and they found that the average life, the mean life of these 36 light bulbs was 745 hours with a standard deviation of 60 hours. <clears throat> the question is, do you have enough evidence to reject the manufacturer's claim? Remember, their claim was that, that you should be able to get at least 750 hours out of that. Now, in our sample of 36 light bulbs, we didn't get an average of 745 hours. Some might have been more than 750 hours, some were less, and it averaged out to be about 745 hours. Now, there was a standard deviation of 60 hours, so there was some spread among all the data. The question is, is it very likely that if it's true that you actually could get 750 hours or more out on the average out of your light bulb, is it very likely that you could just randomly take 36 light bulbs and happen to get such a low mean life? Well, we're going to find out by testing this company's claim. And to do that, we're going to use a hypothesis test. To start out, we want to always write what the claim is mathematically. Now mathematically they're, they're claiming that the mean, and so we call that mu, the mean life is at least 750. That means it could be equal to 750 or it might even be greater than 750. So we would write as greater than or equal to 750. Now because this statement contains the equality symbol or, the, or equal to, that will always be your null. So this is going to be our null hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis then is the complement to that or whatever else this doesn't contain. If the mu is not greater than or equal to 750, the only thing left for it is to be less than 750. Now I always tell my students to put which one the claim is because that makes a difference how you're going to interpret your results. So since this was the claim, I'm going to write claim up there. Okay, from our sample we see that uh, the, the sample mean and the symbol we use for sample mean is X bar was 745 hours and the sample standard deviation we use little s for sample standard deviation was 60 minutes or 60 hours I guess we're an hour sorry and the sample size the number of samples that we tested were 36 so n which is your sample size is 36 now because our sample size is at least 30 we can use a normal distribution to test this sample and so what we're going to do is we're going to I'm going to draw just a really pathetic looking bell-shaped curve here to indicate that we're going to use a normal distribution to test this because my alternative hypothesis has this symbol and it pointing to the left it's going to be a left tail test so somewhere out here is going to be a rejection region on the left side so I just shade that in there's my rejection region this value right here is called our critical value this, that separates the rejection region from the non-rejection region and since this is a Z test we're going to be doing it's a Z, Z critical value usually labeled Z naught with a sub zero now if you need help um, finding critical values I can help you with that but usually you can look them up in a table and it turns out for a left tail test when your alpha is 0 0.05, the critical value should be negative 1.645. So the next thing that we need to do is now we need to find out what is our standardized test statistic. What value do we get in, in, with our data here? What is going to be our Z score, our Z value? <clears throat> when you do a, a one sample hypothesis test, pretty much all the cases you have some sample value whether it be a mean or a proportion or a standard deviation you have some sample value minus whatever the hypothesized value is and then you divide that by whatever your standard error is and I, I can certainly explain these pieces more. I'm not sure exactly what you know, so I'm just going to pretend like you know what those things are. When you do a, a Z test then, 
the Z standardized test statistic, the sample value is your sample mean minus your hypothesized value is whatever this number in the claim is. That's your mu value. And you divide it by the standard error, which is written with sigma sub x bar. But sigma sub x bar, the standard error, is simply the population standard deviation, sigma, divided by the square root of your sample size, n. And if n happens to be greater than or equal to 30, the standard rule usually is you can use s in place of sigma, because we don't know what sigma is, but we do know what s is. s is 60 in this case. Okay, so here we go. If we plug in these values, I'm going to shift this up a little bit here. If we plug in the values, z equals um, x bar was 745 minus the hypothesized value was 750 divided by our s st sample standard deviation was 60 divided by the square root of n, n was 36. If you do these calculations, the numerator becomes a negative 5, the denominator becomes a 10. You can do that on a calculator, which equals exactly, in this case, negative 0.5. So, that is our standardized test statistic. Where does this fall in comparison to our rejection region? Well, remember on a normal curve, the middle is 0. And our, here's where our critical value is at negative 1.645. Negative 1 would be about right here, so negative 0.5 is like about right here. Okay, it's not even close to the rejection region. Since it's not in the rejection region, we will not reject the null. So your, your decision that you will make now in this situation is you will fail to reject the null. You do not reject the null. So what does that mean in this case? Well, if you look at our null, that contained the claim. The claim was that, um, that the average length of a light bulb should be at least 750 hours. Since we're not able to reject that, we're failing to reject it, we, we can't reject their claim. So to interpret this, we would say something like um, at, at the 5% level of significance, at alpha equals 0 0.05, uh, there is not enough evidence to reject the manufacturer's, I'll abbreviate, the manufacturer's claim. Okay, that doesn't mean we're agreeing with the claim. We didn't, we're not supporting it. We just didn't find enough evidence to reject it. Uh, it still might not be true, but we just did not find enough evidence to reject it. Um, and so that is an example of how you can do a one sample hypothesis test.